So basically you've picked up your copy of Skyrim about six or seven years late, and you have no idea what you're doing. First of all, what the hell are you doing for life? Why have you picked up Skyrim yet? Anyway, uh, basically, I'm going to teach you how to play Skyrim. You know who you are by going through some of these early encounters. Because you want to be the biggest badass you could ever be, right? See, badasses do all kinds of cool stuff, and kill people, and dragons, and complete quests, and do cool, awesome, epic stuff like this. So basically we're going to do it in a couple of lessons here. Your first lesson, keep your crosshair on your enemy. You cannot hit anything unless you have your crosshair on your enemy at all times. I know with a controller it's a little bit harder because you're not a you're not a you're not a PC master race person. But you know what? Keep your crosshair on him. You're not going to hit anything without it. As far as teaching you how to fight each of the other kinds of enemies and what they wield, I'm going to run them in the order of which I encounter them. This first one is down in the sewers right underneath Helgen, and it's going to be a dude, a couple dudes with basically some longbows. Your idea, ah, he hit me there. Your idea here is you want to bob and weave, and I'm sure you figured that out by now. Bob and weave, when they shoot, close the distance, and immediately get out on them. Now, most of the time they're going to pull out melee weapons like that. Immediately start changing your style. Shield up, you block that first hit, you keep blocking, and mash the shield because they'll eventually stumble and let it down. If they let down the shield, they have their opening. Sometimes if you can get them to stumble, that completely makes them vulnerable, where they won't even attack or be able to block or anything like that. Shield slamming will automatically make them stumble or lower their guard so you can go in for the kill. Just like that. Or, I mean, you know, if melee combat like this totally isn't your style, you can just get a bunch of overpowered superpowers, all kinds of crazy stuff and magic something like this so uh, one question you wanna see a dead body? I know I kinda just leveled up a lot there from using that one power but I'm not actually going to spend those level ups, I'm going to basically stay at level 1 throughout the entirety of this to kind of give you an idea of how to fight things at much lower levels than you. So here we go, right outside of the Cave of Helgen, we're going to go straight down to these little standing stones that if you follow that whoever you chose at the beginning will lead you to them anyway. Because we're a warrior class, basically we're going to be doing melee, sword, shield, that kind of thing. We're going to pick the warrior stone so we can level up those skills much, much faster. A little bit of a taste of various kinds of combat. We're going to skip straight over to Ember Shard Mine here so that we can take out these bandits. It's a pretty easy encounter, especially for the early game. It's really just full of bandits and your biggest threat's the chief. So first we come up to a guy in light armor. He's got a mace, he's got a shield. Same kind of concept, just try to keep your guard up, time it as best you can. You really just want to power through him and go for the kill. He's a level one, he's a low level bandit. You got really no problems with this guy here. Just, you know, wipe him with, wipe the floor with him and you're going to be good. Going inside the mine, over here in the corner we've got these two. So these guys just are wielding single little one-handed axes, no shields, nothing like that. We're going to try to block, and here's the thing where you're fighting multiple targets. You have to pretty much take out one exclusively, so that you can immediately drop your amount of damage. So shield slam his friend. Shield slam his friend. So you can stop him from hitting you, finish the other guy off, and then finish him. So the key to melee combat is that melee combat is like a dance. And you have to kind of dance to the steps of it in a way that, you know, you're taking full advantage of the movement. So you don't want to sit in one place like a sitting duck. See, in this footage, I'm constantly moving backward and I'm waiting for him to strike me. Waiting for my open attack. See? 
He can just attack me. I back up. I get my shield up. And immediately I get the jump on him. Hit him again. Go for the strike. And now he's gone. No. Okay, dude, I'm trying to dig here. Would you mind? Come here. And tomahawked. So this area up ahead right here is full of a mix of melee and ranged targets. Now, something you're going to have to deal with later on is fighting a mix of those, mostly... Well, range is going to obviously set back, because that's their job. They're going to snipe you while you're dealing with their front lines. Now here, your idea is keep moving, try not to stay in the same place, or else you get shot with an arrow. Like the one that's in the in the post right there, that was about a foot away from my face. Ow! Yep, okay. Now it's time to get down here, dodge, immediately get, get closer to the distance. Hide behind, hide behind, wait for, yep, now dodge, go. Just immediately keep trying to close the distance. Dodge this last one, there. Shield Slammer so she stops bringing the arrow up, and then go for the kill. Most archers, if they're weak enough, you can stop them from notching that arrow before they even pull the trigger. This lady's got a, obviously a double axe. You gotta fight, you gotta fight double axes a little bit differently. See, they can't block and swing at the same time. They're focused on one thing. They're about more like two things. They'll either block, or they're going to attack. They'll almost always have their guard up, even though they're wielding the two-handed, but they're going to try to wait in for you to close the distance so they can swing. Keep your distance, wait for her to come to you, or you can shield slam her and bum rush her and take her out. So Skyrim is chock full of animals. You're going to encounter a lot of them either in like caves, dungeons, or just out in the wild. Things like wolves or bears, like this. And your main idea for fighting animals is don't get bit. If you don't have resistance to disease, you could catch one. Now granted, most animals aren't a threat unless it's like a bear. Wolves aren't that bad. Like right over there, there's a wolf right there. They're not that bad. Um, you can usually get them in about two or three swings depending on the size of the wolf, them being wolves and ice wolves. They're each being a little less difficult than the other. And you can find them in different environments. Things like skeevers, skipping a ride over to Bleak Falls Barrow, uh, we're right in here, we skipped through those bandit encounters, nothing interesting there. Gonna get that nice little pickpocket book right there. There's a couple skeevers down here. The skeevers are very easy to kill, it's like one swing maybe. In fact, if they jump at you, you can, like that, you can basically kill them before they even touch you. Um, do not bum rush a skeever. Like, they could, they can give you a fairly nasty disease, I think it's a taxia, and that's bad for stealth characters. So either catch them on a corner like that, or get them when they're jumping at you and block, or hit them in the mid swing. Take them out immediately. So right up ahead, we've got this um, the giant spider you fight before you find uh, Alvor and get the golden claw from him and whatnot. So first, uh, just I'm gonna pull out a magic spell and kind of weaken it. Works a little bit differently because I've got a mod that's supposed to kind of change the way magic works. Don't worry about that. We're not gonna cover magic much here. I'm just kind of weaken it. See, I can't use it. So, I'm going to switch back over to my mason shield. Now, the idea with big creatures is, some of them can be slammed, like that. And the idea here, do not even give them the opportunity to hit you. Keep your, keep your block up, and then go for the shield slam, so you can hit them over and over. Take them out like that. Smooth as butter. So, right up through here, through this couple of doorways, we're going to find a couple of Draugr. Draugr are a little bit, they're fairly weakish, but they're a little aggressive. Although if you get to into these dungeons early game, you can fight some fairly hard versions like the Restless or the Draugr Rites. Uh, not exactly a fun time if you're super low level if you don't know how to deal with them. Draugr themselves really only wield shields, one-handed weapons, or two-handed and bows and stuff like that. And it pretty much works the same way with a, uh, a regular encounter, but Draugr are a little bit more aggressive. And most of them aren't exactly that hard to deal with, like that, only a couple of swings. But a Draugr is, for the most part, going to be a little more aggressive. Although that guy was kind of standing around like an idiot. So another thing about Draugr is, when you're in these tombs, a lot of times you'll find them sleeping. Now, if you sneak up on them, you see my reticles right next to my uh, health there because of a mod. 
uh, you can get the swing on them and get a three or more times damage on them. And like this restless guy, he's one of the harder ones. I immediately dropped about a third of his health simply by sneaking on him and just whacking him. Just a free extra three hits. So here we get to the bane of most of the level characters' existences, and that's going to be the Death Lord up ahead. Now, uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my difficulty, right about eh, right about here. Yeah. Uh, the thing with difficulty is, outside of Adept, everything changes by about 25% increments. Say like I'm currently playing on Apprentice. Apprentice is going to basically set. Uh, you deal 25% extra damage, the enemy deals 25% less damage than a regular weapon. And so on and so forth, say like, you're playing on Master, they deal, you deal 50%, they deal 150%. It's not like an AI scaling, it's just a solid damage scale to basically increase the difficulty. I'm editing my difficulty because this fight's too goddamn easy on uh, Apprentice. Basic concept. Uh, this thing doesn't appear until you have gotten the word wall, as I'm sure you've figured out by now, but you've never, of course, fought this guy. So we're going to stare at this word and get this nice little lens flare effect. I'm going to open my inventory real quick so I can get myself all psyched out. Just, whoo, whoo, whoo. I'm going to kick its butt. 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 Channel, channel, channel your inner badass. All right. Now we've channeled your inner badass. We're going to loot the chest real quick, because why not? There might be something useful in here, maybe a poison or something. But uh, soon to find out. Poisons do not work on Draugr at all. They're undead, so it doesn't really work. So immediately, shield slam, put some distance. That Fustrada, I'm noticing it's dealing damage. A lot more damage than normal, so that's a bit of an issue. The thing with this encounter is, this Draugr has an ice sword and enchanted items, their enchantments, if they deal extra damage, will actually bleed through your shield blocks. So instead of him dealing like the 20 something he's supposed to deal plus the 5 with that sword, he's going to be dealing, dealing less than that with the shield, but that 5 will automatically be added to my health and stamina because it goes straight through the shield. So getting into the little details of this encounter, he's not really wanting to push me. Well, that's a good thing, because I'm wanting to at least keep my distance to limit the amount of time he has to hit me. And my strategy here is going to be keep my distance so that I'm not caught off guard when he shouts. Keep my potions on hand to, to get a little quickie sippy. Shield slam, get one or two strikes, go up for the block, and then start backing up again. Now here I'm going to drop my distance because he's not wanting to push me. If the enemy's not wanting to push you, you don't have to get get up there and touch him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, no, 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 that. At least if I can use one of my powers here. Uh, since we're both Nords here, we're going to do Battle Cry. See if he can fear. Nope, that did not work. He should be running. So we're going to heal up. We're going to Shield Slam. Hit him a couple times. Back up yet again. Still getting my ass handed to me gonna shout just keep that distance keep that distance go for the block swing swung heal up all right now he's gonna I'm starting to run out of potions at this point I had about 25 before this encounter started he's keeping his distance he's not one to push me so I'm going to immediately switch to my bow and use this to my advantage I'm gonna start sniping him granted he's not doing a ton of damage I'm not doing a ton of damage to him but I at least got an edge because he's not hitting me, I'm hitting him. He can't hit me, I can hit him. And he's not wanting to push me super hard, so I'm going to take that to my advantage. Get him to about a eh, quarter health. Then go back into melee combat so I can finish him off. Same concept. Shield slam, go for the few strikes. Try to block whenever I can. Heal when necessary, which is pretty much after every swing. Get that distance. Go for that shield slam. Smack. Smack, he is dead. Celebratory tea bag. So the basic concept for bosses or something of this nature is you need to be able to keep moving so they cannot back you into a corner because they deal a lot more damage than you do. Slowly deal damage and take advantage of your range or your distance or whatever advantage that you can exploit 
especially if they're solid in melee, switch to range if you can. Pull out a couple of good magic spells or whatever if you have the magic for it. Now, as far as leveling up, we're going to level up now so I can show you which how many levels we have. We get like 12 here or something like that. It's a pretty crazy amount. If you're going to do a warrior class, you're going to want to basically put all of your stuff into health and stamina. The first one, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter which one you're going to do first. Uh, both are pretty important because you need to be able to take damage as well as have the ability to deal damage. But we've got eight points to put in, so we're going to put one in smithing so we can st start uh, fixing our armor. We're going to get a little extra armor through uh, heavy armor, a little extra shield wall so we can get a little extra block damage. We're going to skip right over to one-handed. Since we're at 31, we're going to get armsman, which is going to give us an extra boost to damage, and fighting stance. Fighting stance is going to give us 25% stamina, less stamina for using um, power attacks. Because I'm primarily using maces right now, uh, I'm going to use a point, and I'm going to go ahead and grab Bone Breaker. I think I do in a minute here. This is over recorded. We're gonna scroll over to. Uh, I got a couple points to waste. So oh, what do we want here? Uh, we're gonna swing into enchanting. Enchanting is a great way to make your own stuff, but also make money. But it's not really worth using until you've got a higher level. So now we're gonna swing in, we're gonna grab Bone Breaker. Each of each of these trees has something special to do with each type of weapon. So each of them has something special to do with each type of weapon and we are going to kind of specialize. You don't want to use every kind of weapon if you're building yourself around say maces then keep using maces like me. Like this character right now is kind of using the mace. So I'm gonna constantly use a mace because I have the most advantage in that. If you have an axe, level up an axes. If you're going to have a sword, level up swords, etc., etc. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, analyze this footage, make it like a weird coach with a weird football game or a, like a boxer and just look over how I play. And um, have fun in Skyrim. It's a great game. It's worth it. You didn't really buy it. You got it from a friend. Or you pirated it. I don't know how you got it. I don't care. Um, enjoy the game. I know I have. It's a grand adventure. Get the DLCs if you can, because that just increases the adventure tenfold. So, happy hunting and happy adventuring.